um, even though they take forever to release games, that what keeps saving them is like, for example, Red Dead Two is literally one of the best fucking games ever made. Yeah, you know what I mean. Red Dead One is one of the best games ever made. Grand Theft Auto Five is one of the best games ever made. Like, it's I, just they keep. I think people are getting tired of them repackaging GTA Five. Yeah, it's the same thing that that goes that's happening with. Uh, well, actually, no, I don't think it's the same as Bethesda because. Uh, wait, hold up. All right, I don't think it's the same with Bethesda because Bethesda, I think it was. Um, there were a lot more negative reviews for Fallout Four. You know, everybody. No, loved everyone it. loved Fallout Four when it came out, bro. I I loved it, but I saw a lot of people complaining about the ending and about the fact that you can only have four options in the dialogue. I actually thought it was great. I'm like. It was it was mostly the 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 diehard Fallout fans didn't like it, but it was getting, it was when it came out everyone loved it. Critics and like it was just yeah the hardcore Fallout fans like this isn't a Fallout game like good because the other Fallout games suck. No, I, I love you, you. I hate three. Oh, you're a fucking. I just think you're it's a, f- a f- fuck. I couldn't get into. Th- I just think it's too outdated. By the time I started playing it, I was like, "No, you can't when I played it when downside. it came out." Yeah, I, yeah, did, yeah. I didn't, and I think that changed my experience. I love it's got Liam Neeson randomly in the beginning. <laughs> well, he's your dad. Yeah, he's the dad. Yeah, yeah. It's like son. <laughs> One day you will grow up, and in this ap- post-apocalyptic future, there are still some black bastards you need to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> A little on the nose for Liam Neeson. <laughs> yeah, don't you yeah. Think? And then he's like. Who wrote this? I can't believe people <laughs> try, they tried canceling him over that. I was this like, this motherfucker he, was like pouring out his soul, talking about how he learned about this stuff, and no one gives a fuck about the fact that his friend got raped. Yeah, and they're like, but the thoughts in your head. Yeah, and he literally what? says that he went out like once or twice, wanting to act on it, and that he one day, like after the second time, was like, this is insane. Like, what am I doing? Like, this is evil. Every human being that is not a complete fucking simpleton or that is honest with themselves. Has had a thought like that. I think he went a little bit farther than I think most people would, which is the fact that he was actually walking around in the street. Hoping it would happen. Yeah, yeah he, exactly. He walked around in bad areas with like a nice watch and stuff waiting for someone to jump him. <laughs> he's just fucking, he's just standing in a, in a street corner with a fucking, Rolex. just like a, a new fucking bucket of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he's just standing there he's like, mmm, it smells so good. <laughs> I wasn't this laughing anybody, at that. I, this is the best chicken I've ever had. <laughs> and he's like, this is not working. <laughs> I should go back to acting. <laughs> I think that was probably before. That was probably when he was still a school teacher. And he was a school teacher. Yeah, Bro, yeah, a, I would have been terrified of that motherfucker. Dude, someone pulled a, a student pulled a knife on him. He knocked the knife away and punched the kid in the face. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty started, badass yeah that's what it's funny we said i'd be terrified of yeah someone yeah. put a knife on him he knocked the kid out no because I, I i remember I, like it would just be like the teachers that just look like super calm that i would always be like this fool's not gonna like not that i'd be like terrified but i'm like if i fuck around in class he's just gonna be like you're suspended immediately you know what i mean <laughs> there were other teachers that were like They'll you know like, shut you. up or yeah. like stop or stop or stop but there were some teachers who were like bro i'm gonna expel you right now <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking Liam Neeson. Yep. Shut up. Uh, what else happened? Oh, did you watch the South Park special? Yeah, I, I wa- we we stayed up till midnight and watched it. It was awesome, dude. It was amazing. I uh, I the Cartman reveal because we were all speculating. We yes. thought he was because they were clearly parodying it too. I was like, oh, he's gonna come on screen. He's gonna be all buff. No, we were sitting around. I for never guessing. We this. were all guessing, yeah. and I was like, we were not even close. <laughs> no, because. This would actually seem sort of like actually like very like obvious. Like he ca- he's a rabbi. Yeah. And it would actually seem that it was actually li- maybe a little bit too obvious or something, but it works because they they put a level of sincerity into his like, yeah, he, performance and like in the way that he acts or whatever. And I still it, don't know if he's just messing. I mean, I'm assuming they end. I was he telling has him, to be. I was like, around. by the end, something's yeah. messed up is going to happen. He's going to like shoot his kids in the face or something. <laughs> like literally, he's like, this is all a prank. He's going to like kill his family. I lo- I. You know what's crazy about Matt and Trey is that I think they are. I think they're the best comedy writers ever. Like yeah. in history of, I was I was just I'm watching sorry, Team like America Chappelle show or whatever, but yeah. I, these guys are the best. I was just watching Team America last week. It's it's it's, it's amazing, still hilarious. Yeah, and they are, they're the I think they're the only ones that I can honestly say 
have a comedy show that doesn't feel biased. Yeah, it no, they really right like they every just, other show feels a little bit biased, even yeah. if it's not by a lot. Like no, it, it's it's insane because like you you you'll think South Park's swinging one way, and yeah. then the next episode they'll start taking shots in the other direction. They really do. They because their whole thing is that they just poke fun at whatever's the most absurd thing happening. No, uh, whatever's going on right now. So yeah. you so if it's like a Republican senator or BLM or whatever like they're going to make fun of whatever's yeah. going on right now. So yeah. that actually keeps them not only does it keep them like relevant, but it keeps them fairly unbiased cuz like they kind of like they have no choice or like well if we're making fun of what's going on right now. Yeah. You know, it's not like it's a uh, what do you call it? It's not like they're picking and choosing, you know. Uh my <laughs> my favorite uh joke in it or like or just like a sign to me that they're like actually like beyond like just like comedy writers just great writers in general that fucking twist when uh when stan tells like his wife to shut up and it turns out it's an ai alexa yeah. <laughs> i was like holy fuck like yeah that's that was pretty good. real yeah yeah that was good that got me and uh fuck what's other oh <laughs> I thought it was hilarious, but it, they look at the uh, at the police station and mm-hmm. it's like empty. There's like yeah. I guess like no more cops at South Park, and then some dude looks like looks at another dude with groceries. And he, sh- <laughs> he shoots him in the head. <laughs> and takes his groceries, and everybody's just like, okay. <laughs> That's like obviously me. like, um, they are. You know what it was, dude. I think everybody has like such a doom and gloom view of the future in the sense that it is literally like they were literally going to turn into like China like immediately. Mm-hmm. And when I saw this at Topper, I was like, this is more realistic where like it's just kind of a different version of the same thing where like we're, you know, un- under surveillance and like oppressed by technology and like kind of the same way. It's just it's just a little bit different. Yeah. You know, like you, you, you do get more luxuries, like the fact that you can, you know, like your car drives itself and you can sleep on while you while it drives and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But also, you know, like you have a fucking like virtual wife and that <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally well, because I love the Blade Runner stuff because like, yeah, the they literally played the Blade Runner thing, the the ad of the woman eating whatever they kept playing it throughout the, the episode. um, And then obviously the, the Alexa wife was supposed to be. The Armis and Blade right. Runner forty two, the uh, what do you call it? The what was crazy to me? Again, there's such good writers because like you see how Cartman is like Cartman looks genuinely happy with his life. Yeah, Cartman looks like he has a genuinely like good like human experience. Mm-hmm. Stan is fucking miserable, and <laughs> not only that, but he's just like Randy. Yeah, he literally he's a became fucking, Randy. Yeah, he's like another fucking like. Yeah, it, anger man anger anger issues alcoholic yeah and i like that he's like randy but he's not it's not just randy writing no 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 of course yeah, not but that's I'm what i like yeah but i'm saying that's what i like about great it. it's, writing it's, it's randy like you can tell but it's stan becoming randy yeah. it's not just they're not just writing randy lines and just saying stan and the same thing it. with kenny because kenny's always i mean uh kyle kyle who's always the most like sanctimonious and he's always like the one who's like trying to do the right thing but like sometimes to a fault where he's just like trying to uh you know i mean do the the typical sdw shit yeah he's and he's yeah. fucking alone mm-hmm. like he's alone and like he doesn't have a lot he of doesn't friends. have his family yeah, yeah none exactly. of his family or anything yeah um and i love the the character design like i was like dude this is like perfect like mm-hmm. you can totally tell you can totally see these kids becoming these adults i think it's i think they're all like in their mid 40s right yeah, it's because it's supposed to be 40 years later, and they're yeah. like nine in the late 40s. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, somewhere around. The, we kept pausing the episodes to find all the, like, cameos. Right, right, right. Dude, it was, like, there was so, like, stuff that I didn't even remember. Like, you can see all of, like, Kyle's, uh, Kenny's parents. No, Kyle, yeah. Kyle and Kenny's parents at the old folks' home. All that stuff. Um, oh. Battery died. died on the camera. I left it charging all day today. What, 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 what. All right. Well, listen, guys. It's just I guess the uh, the video part is just never gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I've literally have spent too much money on these cameras and they just don't work. Yep. But anyways, um. Oh, uh, I love that part when they're like, they're like, oh, like we like they they quarantine the whole town because mm-hmm. somebody has like one person, one person's unvaccinated. Like, not- we'll just vaccinate, and the dude's like, 
Uh, who is it? We have Clyde. Yeah, it's Clyde. Clyde, yeah, and Clyde's like, no, it's like a personal choice. And then they they try to trick him by like by Wendy being like, let's just do some cocaine. cocaine. <laughs> and he's about to snort it, and he's like, wait, this is the vaccine. <laughs> and I'm like, that's such a perfect analogy for it, which is like, yeah, listen, motherfucker, we're not. Most people are not thrilled about getting the vaccine. Just fucking get it so we can get this fucking thing over with. <laughs> I love I love that um, when he I, what, I forget he says like some town or whatever and then or like some disease and he's like so you're saying you're not getting it out of selfish shellfish, yeah, shellfish. shellfishness yeah is it because he's allergic to shellfish yeah yeah I was like because like, such- someone working at one of the factories where the vaccine is manufactured. <laughs> Could yeah. have had shellfish. Yeah, and I'm allergic lunch. to shellfish. Yeah, I'm allergic yeah. to shellfish. Um, what's the fucking uh? Oh, that's gonna be butters, right? At the ending, Victor. Yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. That's, because it said chaos. Yeah, doctor. Is it Doctor Chaos? Uh, it's it it Professor Mr. Chaos. Professor is Chaos. Is right, right, right. Character. Yeah, dude, I can't wait to. Because I knew I was like. Everybody's, I was waiting for him the whole episode. Right, right, right. I was like, right, what right. are you going to do with Butters? Because everybody's obviously like... I mean, obviously, everybody wants to see every other character. Yeah. But when you see fucking... Every, I think the most people were like, dude, I can't wait to see Butters. I yeah. I can't wait to see what they we do We were all waiting for him the whole episode. And when, when he wasn't going to show up, we kind of realized, like, okay, this has to be him. Yeah. And I'm curious, are they going to continue us in the next season or are they going to do another movie? I think they're going to do another episode that's gonna air in like a couple of weeks actually oh okay I, well at least that's what i read online because I, I i i thought this was gonna be a one-off i, I thought it was gonna i be did a, too i did too yeah and then i i went online and it said that uh they're planning releasing something else in december okay good because that was great but it ends on a big cliffhanger huge cliffhanger yeah i love uh old randy sick yeah and he's like here's where i lost everything that i loved and your mother and your it's sister just- <laughs> <laughs> that's so sick yeah Stan, uh, yeah, like Stan is fucking like, I don't know. It's crazy to see. Um, I don't know. I feel like they've. I feel like they actually had a lot of time to think about where the characters would be. Yeah, I feel yeah, like they've been trying to do this for a while. They didn't go for any cheap cop out comedy gimmicks. No, the, not at like all. they didn't make them old for the sake of the gimmick of showing them older. Like, right? It actually feels like everything's very intentional. And, and, and everything makes sense. And behind all of it, yeah. Yeah, like, there's no, uh, like, because even with, like, with Carmen, again, they play him off so sincere that it actually doesn't feel like he's pulling a prank at all. Or it doesn't feel like... I, I love the, yes, Abraham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one like, screams Abraham's name while having sex. Like, <laughs> like there's, there's enough of Cartman left in him yeah that it kind of makes sense like i love that his kid sounds just like him yeah <laughs> and he's like fuck you cat the baby too yeah. <laughs> what are the kids na- and the, they have like super, super stir- jewish yes. names yeah it's like David lentil is his yeah. wife's name is Yen- no it's my wife is yentl <laughs> yentl yeah and the wife looks like fucking uh what's it the bitch from seinfeld yeah elaine elaine yeah and he's like super jew he's like you you think that i would get married and live a jewish lifestyle for 40 years just to prank you he's like yes absolutely <laughs> and I, again i think he's right i think that he did do that just to do it. but yeah i don't know i guess we'll find there out are literally because there are literally no limits to what cartman will do he what's uh the kid he fed his parents to oh the sixth grader yeah I yeah. can't remember that kid's name, but he like, and then they did a sequel to that where he killed his grandparents and fed them. To- <laughs> <laughs> he did the same thing. There's uh, there's a post on Instagram where a bunch of characters that you don't see in the episode they just post like their old versions of like the goth kids. And, yeah, because like, the, they're they're creators. at the diner scene. Yeah. Uh, yeah. the the stand up special with the with Jimmy. Dude, okay. I I told you remember I texted you. I Amazing. was like, you're gonna like you're gonna like the Jimmy the yeah. stand up stuff because I the premises are amazing they're like what do you call a, 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 a trans person that like had sex with a donkey like like something super wild and you're like i respect your choices <laughs> like because the premise sounds like it's about to be something super offensive and tell you it's like my p- 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 popsicles i yeah. like for with the green <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect bro dude if i was jimmy fallon and i saw that i would be i'd kill myself i'd be like this is for for the good of comedy i need to end my life right now <laughs> i don't know if you saw this um Ah oh, shit! I don't know where it is, but uh, I saw this thing. It was it was a clip? I think it's out on Wall Street or something. 
and I Jimmy Fallon is uh, interviewing uh, RuPaul. Oh my. Yeah. Okay. I didn't I think, watch the clip, but he like it's. I saw that with the caption like Jimmy Fallon thought he's about to get canceled. Or yeah, something. cause 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 he said something about like so so you're the first drag queen to be on the cover, and then RuPaul goes like drag queen, drag queen, and you just see like I'm not like not Jimmy Fallon is not smiling. You know what I mean? Because sometimes people correct it and you're like, oh, like I fucked up. Like I'm, he looks like he's about to tell her that he's there's a fucking tumor in his brain. <laughs> And then she's, and then, or he, I don't actually know, RuPaul goes like, uh, I'm the queen of drag. <laughs> and you could see Jimmy Fallon's like, bro, he's going to get a fucking ulcer or stomach cancer just fucking biting what his What if tongue. we ever up on, if we end up on that show and Jimmy Fallon dies? <laughs> I actually, I, I've, I've always like fantasized about like going on a, a late night show. And just like Shooting making him in the my face and giving him the Joker. No, more just more. like making my my episode unairable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like finding a way because Bill Burr is always like you can tell that, that shit's heavily edited every time that he's on. Yeah. It. Um. Yeah. So I like I always imagine like I would just tell Jimmy Kimmel I'm like hey you know like beep beep no nah, just be like hey Jimmy I thought you were gonna be in blackface when I came in here <laughs> you know something like that. Or tell fucking Jimmy. I could tell Jimmy Fallon the same thing. Yeah, and, you could. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, technically, what comedian I think, who has been active for the last twenty years could you not tell that to? I was gonna say Jimmy Fallon technically did not do blackface. He did Chris Rock face. Jimmy Kimmel did do blackface because I yeah. think he was just being a black guy. That was on like, the dude show or whatever. Yeah, the yeah. man show, the man which show. is hilarious, by the way. Yeah. That shit was sick as fuck. But then, of course, he had to like give it up for. A fucking. terrible late night show. I'm like, Jimmy, you you're Jewish, bro. What the fuck? Like, who is the pressure coming from? <laughs> Just go to the synagogue and be like, leave me alone. What the fuck? <laughs> um, what else? Oh, fuck. Oh, uh, I finished watching Hawkeye. I was, I wanted to move on to this. Next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hawkeye, I, I don't know, bro. I the, honestly, the first two episodes were kind of a drag to get through. Like, I disagree so vehemently. No, I just I, there was a lot of setup and like. A lot of like exposition, and I just thought it was too slow. I thought, I honestly, I thought those two episodes could have been twenty minutes, and and it would have been the you would have gotten the same out of it. But the third episode is fucking sick. It's a the third episode because I, I have the comic right there that this show is based on, and I'll show. They literally adapt things from the comic. That bridge chase, yeah, is straight out of the with the car and everything. It filmed amazing. There's like a there's like a long take. Yeah, the long take of them in the car is yeah, amazing. Dude, with her like just fucking like throwing arrows at the cars, it's sick as fuck. Mm-hmm. And the the uh, I screamed with the 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 giant man arrow, the pin. Yeah, one. dude, I was, like, was yes! sick. <laughs> Stuff like that. This is I'm so glad that they've gotten the universe to this point where we can have Hawkeye just has right. a pin particle arrow out of nowhere for no reason. Um, um I, and I love that he he they brought back the microchip arrow from the first Avengers. Right, right, right. Yeah, like, what am I supposed to do with this? And yeah. I love the way the dude screams when she shoots oh. him. <laughs> <laughs> the um yeah, cause okay. Now here's the thing I, I I don't know I don't know if this is uh comic book accurate, but why I don't I don't get the villain. Oh, you don't get Echo? Like, does Echo not have a leg in the fucking comics? I don't think she does. Okay, but then that shit doesn't... Like, I was like... No, I mean, I, th- I think I think that is in the comic. That she doesn't have a leg? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, well, it, that shit makes no sense. I see. It makes no sense that she... Dude, I was looking at it, I was like, why is she throwing fucking kicks with that leg? That shit would fall the fuck off. Listen, it's probably some crazy... Okay, well, because here's the thing. It's clear that her uncle who adopts her is Kingpin. Right. That dude has a bunch of money. It's probably some crazy robot Iron Man. Well, that's Star what Man. I'm waiting to see. Yeah. Because when I saw her as a little kid, because here's wasn't. the thing. Yeah. I actually really like the actress. I, I think that for the first, like, because here's the thing, like, a lot of times when they pick women for these badass roles, they pick some fucking influencer looking bitch that I can't buy it. Yeah. And the thing is, the, there's like a weird thing that happens when, like, you can get men that could be, like, I guess, like, you could argue that they're like the same type of like person, but you know, just cause it's a guy, like usually the dude will be like buff or something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's something in him that you're like, Oh, I can see the, this person actually doing this. But 
you know, it's Hollywood, so the women always look like they have fucking AIDS, <laughs> you know, and like they're just like super like twigs or whatever. <laughs> but uh, but she looks badass. Yeah. Um, how do I say her name? Is it Haley? Haley? Haley Steinfeld. Haley Steinfeld. I actually think she like she's perfect for the role. I've uh, loved because do I remember when True Grit first came out? I love True Grit. It's bro. a great she was movie. Per- and she I was remember amazing. That was that. that was she blew up with that. She was like fucking fifteen years old. Yeah, or some that shit. was like a, a big time Oscar winner, and that she was the big thing. I remember everyone was talking about from that movie. She and she she's been great. good ever since. I've loved her and everything she's done since then. And I always wanted her to play this character because she looks a lot like the comic. I book. haven't seen her in anything else. I think besides True Grit. She's done a lot of little nonsense over. The, she she did a movie that's like really stupid, but I kind of enjoyed it called Barely Lethal. That was before A twenty four was only putting <laughs> out bangers. They okay. used to they back when they were like trying to do like fun things, yeah, and it just wasn't working for them. Barely Lethal. Yeah, I know they, every, like all the reviews cool. like ah oh, they never played into the the tongue in cheek title. It's not as, <laughs> it's not as tongue in cheek. They forgot as the, about it. The title yeah. wants you to think it is. Because um, uh, I don't know if everyone remembers, but A twenty four used to not be that good. They used to just make like the worst movies ever. I don't remember at all, to be honest. Yeah, because they didn't start blowing up until they had stuff like Hereditary and all that. But like way back, they used to distribute a bunch of stuff that was yeah. like bad. <laughs> no, but uh, I think she's great, bro. Like not only like her like as an as an actress playing the character, but like the character herself is really well developed. It's uh, I think they. I don't know. I, 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 it's not falling into the into the the Mary Sue trap at all. You know what I mean? And she, it's because it's based on this comic. On a it's good, so on a, good. Yeah, it's a, it's already I, like a, an established. Yeah, good, and like, it's it's yeah. straight up adapting it. Like I'll show. Like there's stuff like they haven't really done this before where they've straight up adapted something. Yeah, and I remember so. I read this comic because it came out just after Avengers, and I was reading it. And I always like this would make such a great TV show. But I was like, that, that'll never happen. Because back then Disney wasn't making MCU right. shows, and now they ended up adapting it. Uh, but yeah, so if you have a good foundation like that, then you know things kind of start to fall into place. It's, it's like really the, crazy. It's like with the Long Halloween for the Dark Knight, where mm-hmm. like they just had such a good like frame to start. I with. and I I haven't read Long Halloween in a long time, but I watched the animated adaptation, which is actually really good. I recommend. I've it. never seen it. It just came out. It's sick as fuck. Yeah, the comic. I mean, it is, but I I haven't read the comic in forever. Watching the animation, which is a very yeah. straightforward adaptation of the comic, I was like, they really like the Dark Knight. Really did adapt this, like, yeah, they changed it just enough to make it. A I mean, Nolan they took thing. out the serial killer part of it, but they left everything else. Well, they left the go- they 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 adapted Harvey Dent's arc. Yeah, and that yeah. scene where where Gordon ends up being the SWAT guy that was Batman in the comic. They just adapt little things. And the dynamic of Gordon, Harvey, and Batman being the that's ones the to main take down. thing. They they, they, they yeah. were like three of them trying to take down, yeah, the crime, crime. And, yeah, and then yeah. they have to sacrifice fucking mm-hmm. Batman. And then it being Maroni's guy on the stand that right. throws the acid, and but they you know they they were gonna do that, and then it ends up being the gun, and he knocks him out. Um, but yeah, dude, I again like I, I just was like I don't know, like I just thought they were too slow. I was like. You know, this Jack motherfucker is, like, clearly a fucking villain. Well, you, you know, he's playing a sword, swords master. Sword master. I have no idea who that is. It's just, like, he's, like, a, an Avengers villain. He, for oh, okay. But, like, yeah. He, he, this motherfucker's a spick, though. I don't understand why he's named Jack. <laughs> he's a Mexican actor. Like, from, like, like a soap opera in Mexico. Well, good for him for being a something No, he's a great actor. Like, he's once. killing it. And, yeah, uh, he is. He every, The entire cat, Vera Farmiga's great. Yeah. The entire cast is great. We're gonna get Vincent D'Onofrio back, and it's so. Uh, yeah, I yeah, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. So, I jumped out of my seat when I saw him because well, there have been rumors that he's gonna be in it. Is that and, what you, know, you were excited for? I was so hyped. Is, is that why you told me to watch episode three? Yes. I was like, was that it, motherfucker? Because I I remember I scrolled all the way to the back. I was like, maybe there's something else. I was like, no. Well, I guess no it was dude, just that was the first real real confirmation we have that they're bringing the Netflix stuff. Like oh, we all right. know, but this is the first time we've seen something in a movie that hasn't been leaked i understand but i thought i the way you made it sound it made it seem like he was gonna whip his dick out or something <laughs> like, i got a little bit no excited. i was just excited for that. i was like yes he's gonna uh and it, uh, the leaks always been he's gonna fully appear in episode four and i love i, yeah, I love I the way they're hyping him up too because hawkeye keeps talking about him but yeah. he won't say him by but name that's the thing that's gonna, like someone out there you don't want to mess with that's like, the thing that's the gonna be sick when they finally uh I guess when you realize that Ronin was fucking killing Kingpin's man. Yeah, shit, that's like, what's that's so cool. Sick, I'm know? hoping that they make it a, that that they show that like Daredevil and Ronin cross paths. That would be so cool. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hoping for as well. Uh, also, 
I, I I totally forgot to ask you this. Yeah. I realized. Have you seen Black Widow? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. I don't think I'm gonna watch it. You, don't you watch all MCU things? Even when I was telling you that Eternals is like good, even though it got bad reviews, you were like, everything the MCU does is awesome. I was like, yeah. I just I think that it like everything has like a. I just missed it. You That's know what I mean? It's on Disney Plus for free. Yeah, but it's two hours of my life that I would rather watch something else. I feel like it's a prequel, so it's like completely non consequential to what yeah. goes on next. Well, but they said uh, the thing I was to say they set up some of Hawkeye in this. Oh, because in the, Black Widow, yeah, what the end credit scene? So, uh, remember in Falcon the Winter Soldier, Elaine from Seinfeld recruits John Walker at the end. Right, right, right. Well, the end credit scene of this is hot is Black Widow's sister at her grave, and Elaine comes up to her and she's like, "Listen," she's like. You know, it sucks that Black Widow died. She's like, here, uh, we want you to kill the person who did it. It's a picture of Hawkeye in the Ronin suit. What? Yeah. So she she's going to be in the show trying to kill Hawkeye. There's a oh, teaser. There's a teaser for the next episode of someone wearing a, a, like a, it looks like a Splinter Cell suit with a goggles, which is what she wore in the comics. So mm. it looks like she's going to be in the next episode. Does this dumb bitch not know that she was killed by Thanos? No, remember? Because Hawkeye let her fall. Yeah, but that's not the same. He well, didn't let her fall. She told him to look to. Yeah, I know, but they're they're this person's pitting them all against each other. I'm assuming that when they fight, Hawkeye is going to convince. So them. they're doing Dark Avengers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. But it looks like she's trying to get her to kill Hawkeye, and just assuming that she'll be emotional about it and kill him before he can like explain. Uh, but yeah, yeah trying again, to get rid of the old Avengers, huh? Yeah, I'm trying I'm just, to get I rid really... of the Black Captain America, huh? <laughs> Typical American. America, k- 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 yeah. I I am assuming that's what they're doing, but I guess no one's gonna go after Thor because apart from Captain Marvel, I don't think there's anyone in the MCU with the firepower to go yeah. after him. Hulk, yeah, Hulk, I guess. Um, when does when does a new episode come out? Next Wednesday, Wednesday, Tuesday. So it comes out Tuesday at like nine, basically. Midnight. No, they actually do drop right at midnight for sure. Maybe um, a couple minutes before. But uh, I've been very happy with Hawkeye so far. I'm excited for what they're going to do next. Uh, real quick, before I forget, did you hear what Alec Baldwin was saying today? Dude, I was actually going to tell you that we should watch the interview before we do the podcast, but the interview had, had didn't drop yet. Oh, it didn't? No. No, uh, I saw the clip where he said, like, the gun didn't fire, and I'm like... Well, he said I didn't pull the trigger. No, I said I didn't pull the trigger. I cannot fucking believe how ABC is squeezing the fucking entertainment value out of this fucking tragedy but like crazy i'm like dude this is like <laughs> like this is like no um what do you call it uh i don't know they're not no class like i don't no, even know how it's to say it. shameless like, it's completely it, yeah it's completely shameless yeah i it's get it <laughs> but like don't fucking lecture me then if you're gonna fucking yeah, for- <laughs> you know what i mean like use this shit is it abc I th- yeah, it's ABC CNN? with with George stuff. Papapalapalus. Okay, I don't watch any new stuff, but I was actually gonna tell you too that we should watch the Kyle Rittenhouse interview <laughs> for Tucker Carlson. But uh, oh, the one where he says I uh, talks about his pronouns. Yeah, <laughs> and then he also says that he supports BLM. Yeah. I love that. Oh man, I want to see it because I want to see if he's sincere. Because to me, that just that sounds... doesn't sound sincere. Huh? No, it doesn't sound. It sounds no, like a it, PR stuff. Yeah, it sounds like a really yeah. fake attempt to like. Convince people, yeah, buddy. You were showing up to the BLM rise of the rifle. You cl- clearly not on their side. I don't think you support BLM. Yeah, like I just, I know the I trial even... was never about that. The trial was just about that specific incident with self defense. And we're gonna fucking have another trial about whether this dude's a fucking conservative or whatever. Like then I, I don't give a shit about that. Yeah, well, that's the public. That's the only trial that matters in the public. Yeah, did you see that these bitches were uh protesting him to not go to? I think it's Arizona State. And oh these these dumb bitches were like, well, first he's a white supremacist and he's a fucking he's white and he's a white. <laughs> like I was like, you can say whatever you want about him, but you can't say he's a white supremacist. He shot three, he white, people. Shot three white people, <laughs> but they're honorary black people because they were marching on the Black Lives Matter side, don't you know? It doesn't you become make, honorary black people, you still don't get the N word pass. It doesn't make any because it, it, it's the complete. What do you call it? A uh, is it conflation or they con- they're conflating fucking being not being a part of BLM with being a white supremacist, basically. And I'm like, listen, again, if that motherfucker was a white supremacist, 
I mean, it's a BLM protest, so there's not that many black people there. But I'm sure he could have <laughs> found one and shot him. And instead, he was, he's like, I guess these crackers will do. These crackers will do. <laughs> yeah, they still pick up pasty ass motherfuckers. He didn't even pick anybody that looks like, I don't know. And fucking... he didn't even pick them. They picked him. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, but uh, listen, we've talked enough about Conrad. <laughs> yeah. We're big fans. Um, big fans. There's so. Hey, you, before we move away from TV, have you finished Hit Monkey yet, you monster? No, I only watched your podcast. There's a lot of shit to watch, bro. Yeah, I don't it, fucking... It's, it's really good, though. I, I... Yeah. No, because I told you, I told you, oh, I told you I started watching Narcos, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't, okay, so basically, uh, season three um, of Narcos Mexico, like, they're just basically, they kind of went back in time and moved parallel with the, I don't know if you ever watched it. No, I've, I've always wanted to. Dude, trust me, it's really fucking good. I will. It's like, a, it's like Goodfellas type, too, where, like, it's narrated and really quick paced, quickly paced. Um, but basically, now they're, like, talking about the Tijuana cartel. <laughs> and... I don't, dude, I don't even want to say his name, but, like, there's a character in the show who is, like, they put, like, his real name, um, they put his real picture and everything, you know, because that's the way they show, they like, they show, like, you know what I mean, like, historical footage, and then they yeah. show you, like, who the actor is. Mm-hmm. I know this motherfucker's grandson. I've met him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, this is hitting way too close to home. And I remember when I met the grandson, because the, the dad is, you know, has the same reputation of, of uh, you know, let's just say being on the wrong side of the law. Yeah. And he's I remember, involved in the war on drugs. Yeah, he's yeah. Siding with drugs. I was gonna say <laughs> on the side that I actually support, but um, I remember like I started watching the the show. It takes place like in '93, and now I'm like fucking like recognizing shit, and I'm like, dude, like, so they they basically part of the show is like na- is like narrated by a journalist who like really existed. I actually I know where like the newspaper is and TJ and everything, right. and. They were like, uh, you know, they need like establishing shots or whatever. Yeah. They did not sh- film in TJ at all. Really? I could tell. I was like, dude, because again, they used the real name and like pictures of this guy who was like, whose whose son was like a mayor in TJ and everything. I'm talking about like this dude's still alive, still a pretty prominent figure in you know like uh, elite society in Tijuana. So I'm like, bro, there's no fucking way they could have filmed this there. I don't know <laughs> if you heard they killed a scout. For like season, I think like one or two. Bruh. Yeah. Because they went down to like, I don't know. I think it was like either Mexico City or somewhere like that. Because the thing is like, now that you're getting close to the 90s, now it's like, it's still. People are still active. Yeah, exactly. It's people are still relevant. Because the thing about like all the Colombian ones is like that shit has been defunct for like mm-hmm. 30, 40 years. Yeah. It's like making stuff on the Italian mafia yeah, here in LA. Exactly. Where like it doesn't. There's like five of them left. Like. I was actually just researching some some stuff like that for something I was writing, and then like there's like twenty of them left in LA, and they're just like kind of just sending stuff back to New Dude, York. Dude, the cameras and the internet and everything killed the fucking mafia because now yeah. it's like super hard to get away with murder and everything. Yeah, it's fucking impossible to get away with racketeering, like all this mm-hmm. shit that like they're still they active used to do. out in New York and stuff. Because I've looked, I was looking like yeah, they're like on the 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 yeah, other side of the country, you know. Yeah, but they're not what they used to be. No. They're definitely because they used to be like a cartel level organization. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking like they would take like they would have control over like four different cities in the states. Yeah, but now they're like basically gangs, <laughs> Get better dressed gangs. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I, I am concerned. I don't want to piss off uh, MS13. With I'll tell you. I'll tell you off air who the person. I'll show you their picture and everything. It's fucking wild. <laughs> I don't even want to say their names because yeah, again, this shit gets close to home. But uh, no. Uh, what's oh yeah. You finally watched the Dave Chappelle special, huh? Yes, I did. What do you, it was pretty funny, huh? It was hilarious. It was really funny. Um, Stop. <laughs> I, just, I can see the stuff people get mad at. I'm just sitting here watching it. This one it. was wilder than the, than the other ones. Oh, this one was insane. When he yeah. talked about beating up the lesbian, I, I was crying. Yeah, when yeah. When he says, like, she got into like, an actual boxing style. This bitch boxes for real. He said, yeah, it's like, so I start ducked it. it. <laughs> he goes, I ducked it. I saw it come a mile away. You should have seen me whipping her ass. <laughs> Uh, no, it was hilarious. Um, and the the actually issue was, he was the whole thing was just him going at the people who have been going at him. The entire special was just they don't see it that way. They see it yeah. as an attack on the entire community. Yeah, he was, but literally everything was him responding. He was even talking about like all his stories were about times people confronted him on things like that. Later, they followed him out to his car, right. and people tried to like talk to him at like shows. Like it's literally just him responding to people. And being like, you're, he goes, you're just assuming things that like aren't true. 
But I love that. Uh, what I think he's talking about some lady who like confronted him at a parking lot. Yeah, at his car. And yeah. he's like, I don't give a fuck, bitch. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, I didn't really say that, but I mean, like, he just. I, mean, I love what he actually said though. He's like, "Did you go to one of those specials? I highly doubt. It. Have you seen me on TV?" Mm-hmm. Or perhaps you, uh, I followed you out to your car in a parking lot. Yeah, it did by comedy act yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, that I, I, to me, that's the, that is like the best response to all like, you know, complaining about content that you don't like, and it's like there's it is not being forced upon you. Yeah, you are forcing upon us your bullshit. Mm-hmm. But nobody's making you watch a special. Nobody's making you watch fucking yeah, I don't know whatever away movie. Or whatever. It's always sunny blackface. Yeah, exactly. Oh, dude, we still gotta go do that protest. Do you know any black people be willing to go with us? <laughs> I yeah, maybe we could Obi. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, haven't talked to Obi in forever. No, I see him pretty often. I think uh, I think he'd be done. Bro, that please please ask him because yeah. yeah, he actually likes it's always sunny too. Of course, who doesn't, dude? I remember people just don't know about it, <laughs> dude. I I um I don't know why I, did this. I think about it. It's pretty wild, but uh, I was dating this chick and she was black, and I played her the pilot. <laughs> oh god no but she was like laughing like really and i was like damn like i was like i should stay with her forever <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> didn't work out but i was like i was that's like people always expect the res- the reactions of minorities when they're being made fun of to be the same yeah as a white woman when she sees it mm-hmm. and it's clearly it's almost never the same when i saw martina martinez i was laughing my fucking ass <laughs> up he was like what did she say? Like, He's a bunch of white boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing about what's what's I think what was a little bit different about this special is that I think he had. Um, you're right. He had like more specific targets. I think he was being more like broad before he was just he was responding he was responding to, to all the stuff and like specific and that's why not happy. He didn't bow right. down specific criticisms like he mentions like an article he's like i'm sure you motherfuckers read this yeah, article he, like yeah it is specific events yeah but and he even told that story about his a trans friend and it's like this guy clearly isn't transphobic leave him alone and he even talked about these are the same people and he was correct not to pin it on them for that person committing suicide right right, and, right. but he was right that they probably weren't helping i love that he like <laughs> Because here's the thing, again, these people are retarded, so he finally had to, like, fucking, like, articulate it perfectly so they would get it, which is that he, as a black guy, is very jealous of how quickly trans people made progress in society compared to black people. Mm-hmm. And I again, this is a good. thing I love the bit when he was talking about like we should have been doing this in slavery days. Yeah, <laughs> putting on booty shorts <laughs> and booty shirts, yeah, getting yeah. on floats. But, and again, this is a good thing, but this is something, again, that these people fucking, like, for some reason just choose to ignore, which is that acceptance or tolerance is, like, on a fucking, like, Mac 10 fucking turbo super nitro. Yeah. When in the sense that, like, it took forever for black people to yeah. be fucking able to vote. It's not that it, it takes X amount of years of progress for this to happen. It's we've hit year X when that's all going to be... It's like it doesn't take 40 years of a specific group to be campaigning for them to reach acceptance. You just needed to reach 1993 for all these groups to reach, you know, no, for, but I'm, for it to be like able to progress like that. Right. But what I'm saying is like it just I like that he like said the stated what I think was obvious, like in his other specials, which was that he just felt jealous. You know what I mean? He was yeah. envious of how like quickly people were offended at you making fun of gay people when it's like when it was completely acceptable to do blackface and do all this other wild shit like before mm-hmm. and ev- no and everybody was like you know <laughs> yay jimmy fallon yeah <laughs> no, you know jimmy what i mean fallon like fucking canceled. like minstrel shows and shit you yeah. know what i mean and then you we've had like drag shows since like what since like the fucking 90s and no one gives a fuck mm-hmm. um i do <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but not to do anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Uh, what's uh? You see that thing of that fifteen-year-old who uh, who shot up a school and his dad bought him the gun. I saw you post about it. Yeah. I'm a- glad my my life has gotten to the point where every time something like this happens, I'm not bombarded with it. Cause man, four years ago, this would have been my whole like 
Yeah, whole timeline. Yeah, I'm so not, yeah, not just my timeline. I've been my whole life. Everyone have been talking about it. It would have been all over. Yeah, again on my feed, all this stuff. I'm just so glad like political things can happen now, and I don't know about it. Yeah, I, I only, I again, <laughs> I literally get all my news of like World Star type of pages, <laughs> where it's just like <laughs> fucking like B T fucking T M Z slash B T. Basically, because. That's I'm, a killer croc one. I've been told more than once I'm in the point. comments, you know, for some reason arguing with these people. Bro, I love like, when I when I see a controversial post and I see your ass is one of the comments <laughs> that gets recommended to me. I saw like I've been told like uh it hasn't been I've been it's been maybe I think I actually think it's been only once, but I remember one dude was like, You ain't even black, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, bro, am I gotta what am I gotta follow? Fucking MSNBC? You yeah. know what I mean? Like what am I gotta follow? Fucking Addison Telemunda. Ray? Yeah, exactly. These fucking gay ass fucking pages. Like this is the fun shit. <laughs> it, it really is. Yeah, uh, I follow hood clips, bro. Exactly, exactly. Fucking rap TV mm-hmm. and all these pages. I'm like, cause the comments are always fucking lit. Yeah, they are. They might be insane, but they're certainly <laughs> not boring. And they're certainly not. And also, there's an other thing that I love about these pages. They never limit comments and they never disable them. All these other woke though the. the the white pages or the yeah, more they, like they disable comments. Yeah, exactly. The more woke pages, they fucking always disable or limit comments. Mm-hmm. They're fucking gay. Because um, rap TV lives on and I love every time they post about someone dying, yeah. all the comments are like, <laughs> please disable comments. Please yeah. disable this comment is gonna be disrespectful. Please turn off comments on posts about people dying. <laughs> I saw the the funniest you know how they post the uh they post something and they put the emoji of the fucking exclamation point. Yeah, I, lo- I, I, I don't know if I started doing yeah. that like a year ago because I thought that stuff was so funny. Y'all not rocking with insert and then the... <laughs> <laughs> the funniest one um, that I remember is when there was like rumored that GTA will have a female protagonist and everybody was like, fuck this. And they're like, y- y'all not rocking with women? It's <laughs> 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 a fucking classic. Yeah. Whoever came up with that, yeah, is, is, that was pretty clever. Race. Yeah, because they used to make fun of them for doing that at first. Yeah, and, then and they now just it's like a meme. meme. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Now it's like a cool. Now, yeah, now it's just like acceptable. Yeah, now all their comments are just, you know, imitations of that. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? On... Oh, no, I think. Fuck. How how into this are we? Oh my god. What? No, nah, nothing. We just got like ten minutes to kill. Okay. Um, I should show Resident Evil now. Oh my god! Twenty twenty one best picture, Resident Evil. Neil McDonough best supporting actor. Robbie Mel best actress. Kai Scaladario best mm-hmm. actress. Uh, one chick who plays Joe Valentine. Uh, Hannah John came in best supporting actress. Best visual effects. Uh, Johans <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> best uh, director. <laughs> best writer. Uh. Best, uh, you really know all the credits? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I can tell you everyone who plays everyone in that movie, bro. I've seen it twice. <laughs> oh my God. For context, I work at a movie theater, so I'm always there now. So I can yeah, just don't like, try like, to justify this behavior. Oh, I work at a bar, so I just fucking take 10 shots every day. Listen, it's the only enjoyable thing in theaters right now. I guess. I never got to watch Dune. I'm fucking retarded. You are retarded. Um, it's probably playing at AMC still. It's just my theater. Like, yeah. If you don't make money, like, I'm waiting for Licorice Pizza. That's the one I really want to go see. I think we should. We you should wait for me to go see that. I think right. you're waiting most for Spider Man. No, but I meant like of non Spider Man yeah. bitch. Did, Did the, you get tickets? Okay, I'm. I'm gonna get our tickets. Here's here's the thing. Uh, I I can't get us tickets for Friday. I just need to make sure I'm off and I can't request today because I missed the cutoff. Cause uh, so. We were trying to get tickets for Thursday. They went on sale at 9 p.m. No, that was hard to do. They were on sale. My friend got one for our group because AMC has this awesome thing where if you do their subscription thing, right? You have they have something called Entourage where you can add your friends to it, and when you buy select, you can select multiple seats, and at the end it'll say, "Do you want to add your friends list to this?" You can reserve seats for your friends if they have the pass. So he managed to get us all seats for Thursday night at 11 p.m. But uh. It was a nightmare. It took us. It took like four or five hours, dude. I was no, like, I, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah, I can get us tickets for Friday. Don't worry. Me and Miguel will live stream the movie from inside. It was me. I was going, yo, yo. I have my uh my iron my iron spider hoodie ready. Iron spider. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, 
And he's wearing a spider moose shirt right now. And yes. it's a video uh, component of our video's work. I think I'm just going to post the first fucking five minutes of where we had. Just fuck. <laughs> I really to, doubt that'll just, be Just to worth prove it. to people that we exist. Yeah, that we're not just some um, retarded AI. Exactly. Hey, and yeah. uh, <laughs> the, the, what do you call it? The alt-right bot? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh... I, I feel I should mention we ended up on a couple people's uh, Spotify wrapped for that. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah, I posted some of them on the story, but I got some some things from people that I couldn't post because their accounts are private and stuff. Damn. But we ended up on a couple people's Spotify wrapped. That That's was pretty sick. cool. Yeah, that was a cool moment. I was like, yeah, I was on. It was on my Spotify wrapped. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, <too. laughs> I, I don't listen to podcasts on Spotify. Yeah, me neither. I I literally had like. I think I had fucking Rogan 1 and Culture Bomb 2. <laughs> I started listening, or I'm going to start listening uh, more to the It's Always Sunny one. That one's sick, actually. I listened, okay, to, I listened to some of the first episode. It's pretty funny. So yeah. next year, on my number one podcast, maybe won't be my own. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, um, what was it going to? Oh, yeah. What did you do for Thanksgiving? Did you go back home and show your family who has the biggest cock? No. I... <laughs> Still avoiding my family. <laughs> oh, you didn't do anything? Uh, I went with my stepbrother's family. Oh. But I didn't go with my family family. <laughs> with this hairy bastard over here? Yeah. Who fortunately oh. isn't here right now. Oh. <laughs> Fortunately. Uh, no. Yeah, I don't want to hear my mom's campaign speech at the Thanksgiving dinner table. I'm telling you, we got a plugger campaign. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want her knowing about this. Oh, about this. Uh, yeah, I... I think my my dad has asked me about it, and I'm like, just just don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. Worry about um, it. I went, dude. I was in New York. That shit was fucking cold as fuck. <laughs> and I didn't like. I I knew it was gonna be cold, but like, we're talking I, about the weather on the podcast now, by the way. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's just, um, you know, it's funny the whole. So I went to. I took the train to Brooklyn because from Brooklyn you get like a really nice view of the of the of Manhattan, mm-hmm. and the whole time I was there, I was like, "This is not the city that I saw in Taxi Driver." Like it's been <laughs> cleaned up so much. Yeah, like, it's everyone insane. I know, like older people who I know who have been to New York like back in the day, yeah, they're like they clean that place up like crazy. I don't know what happened. I'm assuming some mayor. Or it was something. literally fucking Giuliani who just arrested every black person he saw. And, <laughs> hey, look yeah. at the results. Yeah, exactly. I heard people say like, like, like if you walk down a sidewalk, there's literally gonna be heroin needles in the streets. No, because I mean, like not anymore, but like back in the day. No, well, what he did is what some leaders do sometimes, which is that they be see racist. an insane problem, they they go completely overboard with the solution. And basically take the rap for it, and then it's like fuck it. We terrorized the city for two years, but we did progress that would have been done in ten years, and you know, six yeah. months or whatever. Yeah, look at that. No more crime. <laughs> they just went to Harlem and shot everybody. <laughs> we were actually staying by Harlem. I didn't even realize because I you don't was the Hulk there? No, but it was funny. Uh, do you know it was cr- crazy too? Like I I. I th- I think we met more people who spoke Spanish in New York than in LA. <laughs> like literally everybody we met was like fucking Puerto Rican or like Dominican. Dude, these goddamn Puerto Ricans, bro. Holy fuck, they have the most fuck. I don't know if it's the men too, but the women, bro. They need to shut the fuck up. It's so <laughs> fucking annoying, bro. They're like ah ah, see? and I'm like, we're Shit. right here, bitch. They're I'm loud. right here in front of you. They're just really loud. Yeah, it's a loud I- culture, Miguel. You need to respect it. Actually, they're actually pretty chill. You know what I mean? They're like, they they have a good sense of humor. They're funny. They're just loud. They're just <laughs> extremely loud. They're, they're, they're excited for the upcoming uh, Steven Spielberg remake of West Side oh, Story. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hansel Elgord gets the fuck up, bitch. It's getting good reviews. I don't know why. I, I thought it would get tanked. Are you going to watch that shit? My friend wants to go watch. It's not like whatever. I'll go watch. Oh, it. yeah. You're going to fucking hold hands. You fucking... Am I not allowed to watch a damn movie that like Steven Spielberg made? No, it's a musical. What is wrong with musicals? Well, do you like cock in your ass? You already know the answer is yes. <laughs> what kind of stupid question is that? People already know what happens off air with this damn podcast. I think it looks gay as shit. You well, know what I also thought? What? Oh. The original is really gay too. When I was watching... <laughs> I was watching Hawkeye, and they're showing the musical. Yeah, I was like, this motherfucker really like 
went through a traumatic experience yeah. trying to save the earth and now he's watching fucking seven homosexuals play his fucking dead friends <laughs> and then he's like these fucking guys like blew each other <laughs> in the fucking like in the what do you call it the the dressing room before doing this and oh. now they're like singing about saving new york i wanted to bring up and i forgot to mention earlier i love that People were speculating, oh, what's going to happen? That's going to make Hawkeye deaf to need the earpiece. And I love that they're just like, he's a normal person. And right. they just show a flashback cut of like every time he's been near an explosion. I was like, yeah, makes that sense. Sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I'm guessing what they were saying was it was the, the, the nuking of the facility that like did it. But uh, yeah, he's that like, was he's good. He's like, I can't even tell what did it. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you see any Spider-Man posters? No, I'm not. I'm. I'm they're actually. They're actually. We finally got good Spider-Man posters. I've been f- completely. Uh, oh shit! That actually looks sick. Oh, yeah. That was just Electro's three. black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just like the three. Nice. Um, we fi- finally got good posters for the movie. Like, I mean, I don't. I'm a little worried about the movie. <laughs> Why? I feel like it. Well, I guess maybe it's it's to keep. Uh, what do you call it? Um, some sort of sense of mystery to it. But I am a little worried about. I don't know. It feels like there's like a lack of marketing or something. But I guess not because it was completely sold out everywhere. No, the no, it, it's doing. It, it smashed the. It, it beat yeah. the Endgame pre uh, pre sale, which is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that's fucking crazy. But hey, listen, Spider Man's the goat. I what can I tell you, motherfuckers? Suck the spider. If cock. you look at his merchandising sales compared to every other superhero, it's ridiculous. How much he the his second runner up is Batman, and he blows Batman out of the water. It's like if you look at yeah their merchandise is ridiculous. And dude, I'm so glad that they said they're gonna do a new trilogy. Yeah, I, I was getting a little concerned. It is like I don't know if I want to keep playing Spider Man comments. I understand that. I understand if he doesn't want to play Spider Man forever, especially because he's so. But he young. said if by I'm, the time I'm 30, I was like, yo, yo, yo calm down, calm down. Let's yeah, go. I mean, listen, the check will be right. Don't worry about that. Yeah. I'm assuming that's what, like yeah. I saw people like if you think he's being serious, he's just trying to get Sony to you know offer him a bigger paycheck. I'm like you know yeah, um, I hope so. Because listen, I I need another tri- I need I need to see grown up Spider Man. No, okay? this honestly, this is what I need from the new trilogy. I need them to do New York Spider Man right. Again. Yeah, well that's because I, I that's what I didn't want Far From Home to leave uh new york i want i, I want to stay in new york because that's what i'm like about hawkeyes i love the street level new york that's stuff. the thing because to me spider-man is at his best when he's fighting street level yeah because he, villains and everything i want him to fight a, a. that's why i hate that they cut the scene of him fighting the mafia out of uh far from home oh there was a scene i didn't even know that. yeah it's in the trailers right in the iron spider suit and he wraps all the guys up at the restaurant oh, it, yeah they, it's it's his to-do list and they cut it out and turn it into a short film with far from home but yeah, it was supposed to be a scene of him doing all this stuff, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I gotta wrap up this mafia before I leave." Yeah, because that's because in, for example, in Spectacular Spider-Man, they do it perfectly in that oh, cartoon. Oh, that was a good cartoon. Ultimate Spider-Man Two, mm-hmm. when fucking Kingpin beats the shit out of no, th- yeah, with the enforcers. Yeah, they fucking <laughs> beat the fuck out of him, and then they take his mask off. And they're like, "Who the fuck is this?" <laughs> <laughs> and you never think about it. I was like, "Of course they don't. They wouldn't know who it is." One of my favorites was a. Uh, on the Justice League cartoon where, where Luther ends up in uh, oh, Barry Allen's body yeah, yeah. and he like goes to the bathroom. He's like, I need to know. And he pulls out. I was like, I literally have no idea who this person is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Cause like Bruce Wayne, you would know. And like, like right. Luther, no Clark Kent, but like, no one's going to know like Hal Jordan and Barry Allen and Peter Parker. Especially not Hal Jordan. <laughs> um, Why? Cause he's a white pilot. Well, Cause he's the gayest fucking green lantern. No, he's not. That's Kyle Rayner. Well, it's actually Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner is kind of sick. <laughs> no, but could, could we the best one is John Stewart. Yes, I yes. know John Stewart's the best one. But I like Hal. Real Hal's fun. cool. No, I don't like Hal. I think You're I, lame. I grew again. I grew up watching John Stewart. And when I, I saw did Hal, too, I was but like, I've always this fucking mayo fuck. I've always liked Hal too. He's he's cool. Actually, no, the gayest one is the actual gay one, uh, Alan Scott, the first one. Oh right, yeah, the blonde. They made they him made, gay. They made that full gay. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious clearly just a pan like the most obvious pandering attempt too because like they made him gay and then like never put him in a comic again <laughs> i mean he sucked and what he's gonna do fucking make green dildo show it up his boyfriend's ass <laughs> with those willpower yeah something power he probably did do it if they did a comic with that then i would read it. yeah we already know you're <laughs> 
Uh, do you have any recommendation? Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Please watch it. Oh, jeez. Okay. I someone was at my. Uh, I, I was working behind the concession stand yesterday, and I was getting some of their stuff. And my manager called me over, and there was a customer. And he was, and my manager's like, this guy's seen Resident Evil. And the cousin's like, should I watch it? I was like, yes, go watch Resident Evil right now. Like, what about James Bond? I was like, no. I was like, James Bond has made enough money at the box office. Resident Evil. Oh, I was about to say, motherfucker, James Bond is a better movie, you son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is an objectively better movie. <laughs> but, um, but you, Resident but Evil, you want these. Like, <sighs> Resident Evil is an hour and a half, and it's pretty enjoyable. I guess maybe these guys deserve a second chance with more money, huh? I think because. Let me tell you my honest opinion. It's missing 30 minutes and $50 million in the budget. Yeah. Because they actually do a solid job of combining the two stories. Because mm-hmm. it starts out with Claire and Chris together. And then it splits off. And they go in separate directions. And then they do their uh, kind of like a cliff notes touching on the high important parts of their, their own stories. Sure. And then they meet back up again. But they do it in a way that makes sense. And they change the lore in ways I like because the opening is two kids in an orphanage. And it turns out that those kids are Chris and Claire. Ooh. And the person running the orphanage is West Birkin. Oh. No, it's Birkin, the guy that, like, you know, the dude who turns into the monster in Resident Evil 2. Into Nemesis? No. not Well, he in Resident Evil 2, he's the, he's the doctor that, and he's looking for his Mr. daughter. Mr. X. No, because Mr. X is in the police station. They go. It's got the big arm with the eye in it. I don't remember. He's the one, bro. Okay, he kills Mr. X. Oh, okay. He's the main villain in that one because you're you're have his daughter. Uh, but he wor- he runs the orphanage and he does experiments on the kids and he tried to do one on. Does Claire. he fuck him? No, that's not, not com- no confirmation. So he, co- so he did all these crimes for nothing. <laughs> yes, <Okay. laughs> but he tries doing experiments on Claire. Because she starts kind of like wandering around too much, but she leaves, she escapes, and and Chris kind of just grows up thinking she left him. Oh, so I see. he grows up, and and Birkin kind of takes him under his wing, and he grows up with that guy as his father figure. And she comes back into town, and she's like, no, like, and he like, I guess they've talked a couple times since she left, and he just thinks that she's like a conspiracy theorist because she's like, he's evil. He's like, no, this guy took care of me, like, he and I love me. that he. I actually like what they did. Like, they made him, like, he's an Umbrella shell. Like, he actually, like, he's like, no, Umbrella put me through the Academy. And, like, they've always looked out for me. And you oh, left me. I I'm see. like, this is a good arc for Chris. But the issue is, the last act they of shot the it movie, on an iPhone. it's missing <laughs> 30 minutes. So that there's characters go one place. And you can tell they're going to end in, in a different character arc. Right. But you're missing a segment of it. So they kind of just end up there. Like, Leon. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Leon fans are going to be a little mad because they do make Leon like an idiot in the movie. But by the end, he's a badass. But you're missing the 30 minutes they ex- explain how he got there because he's like a bumbling, dumbass cop on his first week. I, I still will never forgive them for never casting him properly. I know. Like, that's... I actually... <laughs> I don't know. I got over it because this guy does look like if if you, like, were to make Leon and a character creator and then just up the skin tone... Yeah, it kind of does look. But he's like not him. even blonde. Yeah, I know. If you just change the that's hair the color. one thing that matters. <laughs> His blonde could have made. It could have been fucking. He still Den- looks like an e boy. It could have been fucking Dennis Rodman. Listen, <laughs> that would have made more sense. Leon's biggest thing is he looks like a little e boy twink, and this guy looks like an e boy twink. But yeah, like you kind of see him growing to that because like <laughs> he really yeah. gets like messed up. There's there's one scene where I'm like, oh, people are gonna be mad, or someone takes his gun off of him. And I was like, Leon fans are not going to be happy. And he's kind of like a bitch, but like, you know, he gets his gun back and he kills his zombie. It's a scene of the well, trailer. Well, he's a regular he guy him. in the second one. He doesn't become a badass until yeah, the fourth one. Yeah, but like he, he literally is like, he's he's an idiot in this. Like yeah. they literally say that he actually shot his one of his partners in the ass in training in the <laughs> academy. <laughs> and as soon as I heard that, I was like, Yeah, I, I can't know. watch this movie. I, I, I'm going to make you watch it Clockwork Orange style. No, we'll do that for Clifford. Yeah, I was trying to see House of the gooch house today yeah. and miguel was wanting to watch something else and he literally said clifford question mark 
<laughs> Clifford, the big red dog with the big red cock. <laughs> yeah, he also added that after <laughs> the triple X version. I said, "I'm if I go, I'll be damned if you think I'm watching Clifford over." I'm gonna the Google Gooch Clifford house. Rule Thirty Four right now after this podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna do it right now and show it to you. Let's I don't let's see what's see in that. it. I'm um, scared. I I'm really confident there won't be anything, but I'm also a little bit intimidated there might be. I have a. Well, my recommendation is actually a book that I haven't read. I haven't read a book in forever. Um, okay, so I'm just Googling Clifford porn. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what the fucking full name of the book is. I have it right here. Not a... <laughs> Look, at, bro. This I I have I've been reading. Racism. I've been reading this in public, and I'm like, I one of these some one of these days somebody's gonna fucking just fucking smack me in the face. I will. But it's it's a book called "Woke Racism: How a New Religion Has Betrayed Black America." Now, I'm not a big fan of the "woke racism" part of the title. I feel like that immediately like people who would have who, who would like be a little bit open to it they just see that and they're like oh this, you know this is some fucking self-hating black person or whatever <laughs> um but he was like one of the dudes that i started listening to when i got when i basically got fucking de-radicalized i guess when he got red pilled i guess yeah a little bit <laughs> um but uh honestly the book is it's not really for people who have lost their minds because they're not going to get it back and they exp- he basically explains in the book, he's like, the reality is that this shit is a religion and that's why it makes no sense. And that's why it's like unforgiving and why you get like cast out for not following its tenets. It's like it like he basically lays it out how it completely fits, um, you know, and like into like the context of a cult, basically. Yeah. And no, I the- have said that r- this political stuff is like a cult. That's like why I don't know how much I've talked about this on the podcast. Like the reason... I won't bother talking to my mom about all this political stuff. Is like anything I say, she'll use to like make a like a martyr complex thing in her in her cult mindset. No, because it's the same with QAnon. Because they're like these yeah, well, fucking, that's my mom's into QAnon. Yeah, like she, they're waiting for fucking like John F. Kennedy to show up at Dallas, and like <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but he's been dead for a while. Are they actually? They were, yeah. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, it's by John McWhorter, I think. Yeah, it's a re- it's a good book. I honestly. I think it's more for people like me and you who like just want to find a way to like kind of like articulate your feelings because I've always been like I know I ha- I know I'm iffy about the shit that I hear and the shit that I read. I'm like I know there's something wrong with this, but I don't really know how to like articulate it or I, you know what I mean? I honestly I don't have the time to really just go into it and be like, "All right, this is spe- specifically what's wrong with it." Yeah. and how to explain it. And this dude does that basically and I just I don't know, it's been a great read. I'm kind of I'm like I can't read it all all of it at once because I'm as I get fucking angry because he just keeps he just keeps bringing up examples, you know what I mean? Of people getting canceled, people saying retarded shit, <laughs> like a fucking like professors like in I think it was like in Princeton or some shit like that where they had to like all get up and proclaim that they were racist, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's just Lord. like all this retarded culty shit. Uh, but it's a good book, and if you guys are anybody listening to this is you know a little bit worried about the trampling of free speech. And uh, the fact that we can't say cool words anymore. Yep. You know what? You know what <laughs> I'm concerned about? What? The lack of Clifford porn on this podcast. Oh my god! I'm so sorry, bro. Clifford the Big Red Dog rule. Oh what? No, hold up. Rule? No, oh my god. Rule. He's learning to spell. Thirty four. Oh, <laughs> there's all. No. There's a, there's a whole thing on fucking um. <laughs> It's the on little, 4chan, it just says slash. Oh, <laughs> it's the little blonde girl from the book. No, so that... they turned Clifford into a bitch and they gave her big tits and a dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> stop! <laughs> what the fuck? It turned him into a furry and then into a chick, into a fat girl too. What the fuck? Stop! Oh, I've seen enough. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that might not be such a good idea. Well, that's the podcast. You fucking. <laughs>